Howdy everyone, it's me once again, the one and only Kittle Rodan. And today, as you can see, I'm still continuing my Disney movie marathon by talking about the movies, shows, or whatever the case may be, I guess. Uh, so let's just get to the point, I guess, because for this video, I just want to respond to a, an article real quick, I guess. And it's this one, it's referring to the first Frozen film, how Frozen... Perfectly flipped the script when it comes to the old Disney fairy tales, trope or whatever. And just to be perfectly transparent here, folks, I'm not using this article I just came across as an excuse to, you know, try to take jabs at the old original Disney princess movies or anything. I actually like them. I'm actually quite fond of them. I enjoy these movies. So, I mean, yes, okay, sure. There are some princess movies I like more than others, you know, obviously. So, so that, that's, but that's besides the point. I just thought I'd clear that up. I'm not making this art video to response to this article as a stab towards any of them, just to be perfectly clear. Even though there's been people out there that would do that. Trying to claim that the error, the resonance error from the princess movies are better than the originals. I'm not saying that either. Although, they're all interesting in their own way, even if some of them are less than stellar but okay just let's just get the point let's just talk about the article i just want to make that perfectly perfectly clear but the article like i said it's referring to the first frozen film of course and it brings up the most obvious thing uh it became one of the highest grossing animated movies from disney especially when it comes to the disney plus i'm like okay no kidding we all we all know, we all are aware of that like duh and um, it brings up the, of course, the, again, it keeps bringing up the top is gross and top scores. I mean, okay, article. We, we already know that. We already know that it became one of the highest grossing films ever, especially from Disney. And yeah, okay, um, it's been delayed by, you know, Pixar, Disney, and all that. I can point out the obvious. And the fact that, you know, um, point out the individuals who were behind it. And um, like, okay, like, what are you talking about? Trying to bring up the fact that it broke one of the uh, biggest tropes, and I'm okay, not, like okay, I get it, I get it. The fact that these princess characters, I guess princess characters, I should say, Anna and Queen Elsa are really active. I guess you would say that's basically what this movie is referring to. Uh, this article is referring to that, really. I mean, that the characters are way more active than compared to a lot of the other princess movies. Well. <clears throat> Yeah, ab about that. So, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, you realize that this was not the only movie that did it. I mean, that's not me to bring down to Frozen, of course. Frozen is definitely one of my favorite animated movies uh, from the studio, and that's why I keep talking about it. At least trying to make at least trying to make excuses to talk about it. Yes, it, it does a lot of things great, and yes, it's, it's trying to do something a bit different. Yes, it, it does. I don't want to get too specifics here because I know not a lot of people. Or um, have seen this movie, and uh, yeah, it does with isolation, which yes, a lot of these movies don't really dealt with really. The fact that they're gonna have a twist ending, making of all the characters bad, the bad person, which yes is, is in some ways unexpected, and the fact that some characters will always wear gloves to hide their, to her attention is a subtle detail. Yeah, so there's a lot of little, little things like that I can actually bring up that this makes it different. But this article is acting as if just because of the fact that they're active makes it completely different. I mean, how about that uh, article? So yeah, those films, Disney films that were released before Frozen 1 and 2, they did the whole active princess thing previously, so I don't know what the article is talking about. If anything, the Frozen films continue this trend not that there's anything wrong with that unto itself don't get me wrong i'm just saying that the article got that bit of their information wrong really it showed me it wasn't the first that did it again i'm not taking steps of frozen or anything i'm just pointing that out i mean hell senator three one of the better sequels when it comes to this disney stuff director veto stuff actually had uh the character the titled character was actually way more active than compared in the first and second film of the series. I mean, hell, Cinderella was remade twice, which, yes, of course, is incredibly lazy, and the one from 2000, 
15 had Cinderella really active, Sh true, but that wasn't very good either. And yeah, to be perfectly fair here, this wasn't the only time ha the company had remade a film twice. I guess they've done that before. Because there was a cheaper by the dozen that was released in 1950. Which I haven't seen yet, by the way, just so you know. But I plan to at some point. But then, in the early 2000s, of course, Disney did the own version of it, Cheaper by Dozen, which did get a sequel. And then it was only rebooted again for the second time for the 2022 version. So, what the hell? That just seems really lazy if you ask me. Anyway, that aside... Okay, got sidetracked there. Just thought I'd just throw that out there, folks. Anywho. But yeah, folks. Again, I'm not trying to take jabs at Frozen, like, out of the first one, I guess. Just talking about the, just the first film for this video, I guess. Um, just not my way of trying to take jabs at it, like, at all. So, yeah, it does its own things, like I was saying earlier, of course. And the, and the thing, the article is trying to bring up the sisterly hood, I guess, the bond between the two. And, again, this was not the first time that the film, ha uh, Disney films had done this. Yeah, like, for example, Lilo and Stitch, along with the sequels, have followed. Yeah, those films really did go into the whole sisterly love kind of thing, even though they have their disagreements and whatnot, but it's there. I mean, okay, yes, it's not 100% like it, obviously, but it's been done before. It does not, by no means, that thing is jab that's frozen, obviously not, I'm just saying. But you want to talk about things like, let me see here, uh, we're, we're just right off the bat, let's say like the one scene earlier on, a true love's kiss, okay, this wasn't really super early in the film, but a true love's kiss can unthaw a heart or something like that, a frozen heart. So, okay, I see what you did there. Uh, it's for, it's a foreshadowing, I guess you can say. Foreshadowing. I know typically the prince Charmeli will come in, in the last minute, the last second, to give the princess a kiss. But Frozen just gives that the finger and just, um, uh, I guess you can say, a twist ending, I guess you say, happened here. And then it goes into the whole idea that it's a, it, it's a reference of true love between sisters. So, in other words, it's a foreshadowing that's kind of vague, but at the same time explicit enough that you could be considered as a subword of expectations, I guess you would say. So, that was actually put in a really nice touch there. As I was saying with Hans earlier, yeah, there are symbols, reflections, I guess you would say, little wink wink of his true intention throughout the entire thing, and you can rewatch it and just realize that, okay, there's more conflict. When he's more, when his plans have become more aggressive, I guess. So it's little things like that, I actually like that. It's not flat out telling you. But, and also the thing is that queens, queen characters can be considered sort of evil in some of these movies. It's just flat out mean or whatever. But again, Frozen just flips that script by having Queen Elsa be a good character. Is she, a per is she perfect? No, she's flawed. Makes sense. She's not out to be these all perfect, all being or whatnot. She she has flaws, which is something that people don't usually do with with the, with the main characters. Usually, the main characters they want to make them perfect all the time, which in itself is pretty boring. Flawed characters can be pretty interesting, and that's definitely she is like that. She's written to be flawed. She's not perfect. And yeah, I know there's the other extreme where all the characters could be heavily flawed up to the point they're just flat out unlikable, which she has can be a bad sign when it comes to writing. And don't get me wrong, I know that's kind of the joke with this the show. I, I, I get it. That's the joke. I, I'm, I'm just saying. Just using this as an example, a frame of reference, I guess. Another thing is that, yeah, queen characters, they uh, often, yes, they're just in the background, not doing much, which happens quite often, really. They're just, they're just there briefly in the movie and just get sidelined to, like, everything else in the movie. So... Yeah, that's a thing in these films as well, when you think about it. So again, I'm just trying to point that out in some ways, of course. And yeah. So, now that's the thing. Um, yeah, these little, little things like this, the article doesn't really bring up. And yes, it keeps bringing up the fact that the movie made a lot of money. The movie made a lot of money. Okay, I get it, article. The movie had made a lot of money. That's capitalism for you. You have to take that risk. To see if it would work. And in this case, it paid off. It, it worked.
And um, now that's not me trying to take a jab to the system or anything. I'm just pointing that out just to be again perfect here. But um, and uh, but just yeah, just saying. Anyway, I was pointing out yeah the um, the it looks like this like the, um like this like the fact that I mean yes of course it's the sisterly sisterly bond that's what, like the like the main thing that people keep bringing up over and over again. Apparently, that's enough to make it different from the other Princess movies, which, again, like I said, I disagree. I feel like a lot of people are keep missing a lot of those details I just mentioned. There's, like, a lot of other details I can mention, but a lot of people just seem to dismiss, like I was saying. Yeah, I also liked how Princess Honor over here was really feisty and really determined to do what she wants and complete her mission, rather than just making her really obnoxious and loud for no reason, and talking down to everybody around her, and like a sort of TV show. But another thing is that, like we said, she has a mission and she wants to go on and get it, even though there's a chance it may kill her. She just doesn't lay around like some lazy teenager and doesn't want to do anything. So that's something. So, okay. Of course, writing is very important, folks. Writing a good script is very important. Yeah, one thing a lot of people don't seem to really understand is that you must have a script. The script itself is one of the most primary important things when it comes to making movies. And now that's like, well, no kidding, no shit, Captain Marvius. But, oh boy, you, you would realize that how many people would, don't think about the script at all. They were focused on literally everything else except the script. That's weird. Yeah, it's one of the most important things out there. Another thing I would point out is that another thing I would bring up is just I know this is a very sensitive subject matter, but childhood trauma. Childhood trauma can come in in all shapes and form, and yes, it's not an easy thing to tackle. Not really, and you have to be really careful on how to how to do this. Point being is that this can have a later effect during the individual's adulthood. What happened back then can later affect them, you know, cause and effect. And that's that's in the movie. Isolation does not help the child like at all, and this can actually have an effect with the relationship with any other relatives. And that's exactly what happened in the movie. I didn't see. I don't really see this in the other Disney Princess movies. My point being is that yeah, this article doesn't really go into much detail. Not really. Okay, what sets it apart from the other Princess movies? I mean, I myself always gave a, quite a few examples. I can give quite a few more. But people like this, who write articles like this, barely talk about such details. Like, for example, like the whole childhood trauma. You can say she was way happier when, she, when they were little compared to when they grew up. And you said you the progress. Yes, yeah, this in itself is pretty damn depressing when you think about it. And then fast forward some years, you, there, yeah, there's a uh, avoidance personality disorder or avoidance Avoidance emotional disorder, I guess you can call it, which, yes, is an actual thing. So, yeah, you could really go into depth with this, for, of course, which, yes, typically comes into childhood, and, yes, she doesn't want to get close to people. And, yes, she, you can say she matured over the years, sure, as, 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 as people should. But even then, when she got older and more matured, she still avoids wanting to talk to people. She wants to be closed off on an emotional level. She's very closed off. I mean, to her sister. And basically everyone else. Which, yes, is, a, is of course a thing. And, yeah, I, I think that is definitely something I like about the movie. As sad as that seems. But there you go. Yeah, even if this doesn't exactly prevent them from talking to people. Which, of course, they can and they will. However, what I'm saying is that it's just on an emotional level, they just can remain distant in that regard. So, okay, let's just say Queen Elsa is speaking to somebody, and they said individual, it could be whoever, it doesn't really matter, just whoever, would be speaking about her, and they ask very specific questions about her personal life and whatnot, and she would, in, she would, in something that would be directly about her, or, or, or even indirectly about her in any shape or form, she would intentionally avoid answering that question and, and will probably give a very vague question as response. Not really telling the truth, but ain't lying either. So, I mean, okay, then um, she would try to avoid any kind of clues. I mean, it doesn't have any questions really either, to be clear. Just 
wants to avoid uh, whoever she's in a conversation with would intentionally avoid leaving clues on uh, some pieces out to get, you know, being put together and whatnot to make sure that nobody would know. Is what I'm saying. That aside, would also lead to the fact that she maybe not want to tell anybody about where she's gonna gonna go at or where she's gonna head to. It, this one, of course, we I mean it's not limited to, but it will include fat relatives. But just stay away. Which I mean, I think it actually did happen when she made that ice castle. You wouldn't let her go, if you remember. So she just went away. She didn't know. She didn't tell nobody where she went. Even afterwards, when when that whole bit was done, she still didn't tell nobody. Like at all. She was she was intentionally not letting anybody know so that nobody would get close to her. And she even mentioned herself later on. So yeah, I like the part where Princess Anna finally discovered the place of uh, Queen Elsa's hideout, I guess you can call it. And Queen Elsa admitted that she liked it like this better, the isolation. And she intentionally uh, avoided getting closer to Princess Anna. You can tell by the whole body movement, she did not want to get close, like, at all, whatsoever. So, even if, with someone like this, even if you keep pressuring to ask questions, like, okay, let, let's assume that the person can't take the hint. Like, someone that's socially awkward doesn't take the hint. Someone like this will get annoyed because... Get the damn clue and leave me the hell alone. But um, maybe at first, maybe a bit passive about it. But if the person does not get the damn clue, to be with someone like Elsa, Queen Elsa, would just get really irritated. So yeah, her younger sister, Princess Anna, is like literally the exact opposite. Yes, she's very adventurous. Yes, she's cheerful. Yeah, lots of great char character qualities about her. Not, I like that. But yeah. A nauseous attachment disorder, which, yes, is a thing, folks. Or you can just call it insecurity, attachment disorder kind of a thing, which, yes, is actually displayed in a movie. Because with Prince Hans, yeah, she accepted Prince Hans way too quick than uh, she should have. Yeah, she's considered as a flawed character, which I'm fine with. And, yeah, like that whole scene in the beginning of the film where the whole, the whole bit where... Queen Elsa told her that she can't marry a man she just met. Well, I mean, yeah, good point. That's true. And you like the part, again, or in the film, where the whole marriage bit. So, you know, when Queen Elsa was trying to inform her that she can't just marry anybody, any smuck comes across, yeah, it's like she's doing, which on over here takes offense to, and she's trying to press some questions, kind of what I said earlier, folks. Where people keep asking questions, like, two people like Queen Elsa, and then, like, uh, she, Anna over here keeps asking questions, keeps pressing her more and more and more, and rather than just talking about private matters, you know, in private, like Queen Elsa existed, which, of course, Anna over here completely disagree with, which has irritated Queen Elsa. Elsa even further, which just yes, caused them to, you know, the two of them to get really angry at each other. Because not seeing eye to eye. Which is actually very realistic. Because siblings don't always get along. Like, at all. And then, the whole glove thing, the dirt, that leaves them to even more confrontation, of course. And, yeah. Yeah, not a good mix right here when it comes to that. This, of course, is going to leave in a conflict. Which... The thing is that the article like this, articles like this does not really go into it really. I mean, if you say it's different, then explain how it's different. Give me detail. How is that I did that better than what this article did? That makes no sense. How is it that I did it better? But there is a lot more, I can, I can say, folks. There's still a lot more, I mean, a lot more when it comes to this kind of stuff. There's plenty you can say, but the... This video is really lengthy as it is. It's like, what, 20 minutes already? Holy hell. But yeah, folks, I thought that was kind of a bad article. Like, that's kind of the thing that kind of annoys me. A lot of people avoid getting to specifications like, like, like it just did. Ugh, anyway, thanks for watching, and take care. Until next time, see ya. Oh, yeah. Later.